Hello, book two. I don't know quite how to make this video, um, but since it's a request for your indulgence, I'm going to wing it. I'm going to do my best. Uh, because I've been thinking about books. Uh, I think about books all the time. They're my profession. They're my passion. Uh, they're also what we do here on BookTube. I've been thinking about books lately and ordinarily at the beginning of every day. One of the best things about my, my early morning is that I think ahead to the conversations that we're going to have. I think ahead to talking to my imaginary booktube friends, as I put it, and as all my friends put it. Uh, and what fun that's going to be. How many different bookish subjects we're going to hit on. How many of my fellow booktubers I'm going to unjustly malign. <laughs> all sorts of fight picking and sass and questioning back and forth. All in this, this world of books that we all love so much. And uh, today, when I was thinking ahead to doing that, uh, it felt strange. It felt very strange. And it's felt this way before, but never, for some reason, it piled on today, and it's never felt quite so acute. Uh, and it's because of the news. Uh, it's, it's because of the news just broadly. Just the broad spectrum of the news. Uh, America has exceeded 100,000 deaths to this pandemic and infection rates and death rates are skyrocketing upwards in states that have decided to address the pandemic politically rather than scientifically. Governors saying, I align politically with the president of the United States, and the President of the United States says we must open our economies as if nothing had changed, so I will do that. I will do that. Even though it puts all of the citizens of my state at risk of dying, I'm still going to do it. Um, and those numbers of infected and deaths have cratered the economy. There's a gigantic percentage of Americans who are currently out of work. That percentage is only going to go up. And uh, the, there is no national strategy to deal with any of that. The national strategy until just a month ago was to deny that any of it was even happening. And now the national strategy has devolved to finger-pointing, uh, blame-laying, excuse-making, record-falsifying, that sort of thing. Uh, and that's led to a, a weird, diffracted, atmosphere. That is part of the broader spectrum news, just the news. Naturally, because many, many states in the country, and in a month it will be all states in the country, are worried about packing people into polling places in the November election for, for the Senate and the President. A lot of states have looked at absentee voting, at voting by mail, at ball sending out ballots to registered voters the way that has been done for decades, for generations. If you, you always have the option to vote by mail if you can't make it to a polling place. Well, the rationale is that nowadays the thinking is that a huge number of Americans are going to say they can't make it to a polling place because it, may, it means standing in line sometimes all day. Uh, the Republicans in, in the Senate and the House of Representatives have been very busy on the state and federal and local level for the last t eight years redistricting. Uh, specifically in order to suppress Democratic votes. And that often results in people waiting around to vote all day long in very constricted circumstances. Um, naturally, people don't want to do that uh, because that's exactly how you catch this virus. So governors have been uh, sending out absentee ballots. And the President of the United States has been uh, violently fulminating against that since he learned about it, saying that it is rife with fraud and that it will, meet, it will certainly lead to an, as he puts it, capital R rigged, capital E election. Uh, this is projection. This is what is known in the common pop psychology world as projection. He is going to contest this election anyway. He was going to do that anyway. As many, many commentators have pointed out, he has not stopped saying that the 2016 election, which he won, was rigged. So uh, 
in response to, it's, it's factually demonstrably false that this is rife with corruption. That it has been examined with a fine tooth comb for many, 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 many years. It is absolutely demonstrably false. And in an unprecedented move, Twitter decided to append to one of those, one of Donald Trump's tweets that this was rife with fraud, a little link saying, get the facts. You click on that, it takes you to verifiable, factual sources telling you this is false, that, that there isn't this plague of falsification of fraud is not existent. It doesn't exist. And in response to that, uh, Donald Trump immediately called for Twitter to be censored. Toe the line and allow me to lie to my followers, or I will use the power of the presidency to crush you, to regulate you, to censor you. Uh, and that has further escalated, <laughs> that has further escalated a war between Donald Trump, who happens to be President of the United States, and the First Amendment and the Constitution. He doesn't like those things. He never has. He'd like it if they were in his hands, if all of that were in his hands. And a third of the country would like that as well. A third of the country would like to live under a Trump dictatorship and have openly said so. Uh, and then, uh, a little while ago, a man named Floyd George was dragged from the sidewalk by a man named Derek Chauvin, flattened in the gutter, face down, handcuffed, and then Derek Chauvin, who was a police officer, murdered him um, in cold blood, on camera, in broad daylight, while being filmed by six different people. His fellow police officers stood by and did nothing, while, while the victim pleaded for his life, said he couldn't breathe, and told eyewitnesses, they are murdering me. Uh, and naturally, since neither uh, Derek Chauvin, the murderer, nor any of his accomplices have been arrested, riots have broken out in many cities in the country, some peaceful and some not, and that is only going to get worse. Buildings burned, police precincts blown up or attacked. That is all, I think, going to happen. And uh, I don't know anything about the, uh, the people involved. I, I know only about this, the inciting incident, what I saw, what everyone has seen. Every adult American has a moral duty to watch that film, to watch the murder of Floyd George. Every American adult has the moral obligation to watch his murder. Uh, but I do know one thing from watching that film and from having knocked around this world quite a bit. I have been in, in quite a few dodgy situations with quite a few dodgy individuals in my life. And I know one thing for sure having watched that video. I knew it the minute that I watched it. Uh, because in the video of Derek Chauvin murdering Floyd George, He's looking right at the camera. He's not, he's not trying to hide anything. He's not trying to hide what he's doing. Uh, and when I looked at that video, I knew one thing beyond a shadow of a doubt. Now, when the press investigates Derek Chauvin, when they, when they get around to profiling him or to digging into sealed records or whatever, they're going to discover this, I know, beyond a shadow of a doubt, because I've seen that before. I've seen that face before. I know one thing beyond a shadow of a doubt about Derek Chauvin, and that is that he has killed someone else. He's killed before. Maybe more than one person. But he's done it with impunity, so I'm assuming he did it while he was a police officer. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt, I, I will just wait for the news reports to come out, I know beyond a shadow of a doubt he has killed someone else. I've seen that face. It becomes the very worst and rarest kind of addiction, of hunger. And it shows in the eyes. Uh, and because uh, the racists in America know they have a racist as president, they have been emboldened in the face of these protests and riots in their cities or in nearby cities, and that also is going to get worse, so the protesters will be killed. Also, all the racists on any kind of police department have been emboldened because they have a racist as president. And. Because the president is racist, he immediately tweeted that the people involved in these protests were thugs, 
and that if the local governors didn't send in the troops to shoot them, he would send in the National Guard to shoot them. And Twitter removed that tweet because they, they, it violated their policy of glorifying violence. And that is also going to get worse. <laughs> that is also going to get worse. Uh, the, this morning, clear, unambiguous film footage of police officers arresting reporters for reporting on the riots. The reporters identify, very calmly identifying themselves the whole time as, as reporters and filming the whole thing. Now, the, the governor in question ordered their immediate release, and they have been released. Uh, but the reason why they were arrested is because the President of the United States has been saying for three years that the press is the enemy of the American people. They're lucky they weren't killed. And that also is going to get worse. <laughs> and all of this, in the shadow of a pandemic and coming up on a national election, uh, this morning kind of got to me. It kind of got to me. A, a, a murder committed in broad daylight and filmed. And the murderer is still able to watch TV, still able to walk the dog, mow the lawn, has a police uh, cordon around his house to protect him. From people who want to kill him for having committed murder. <laughs> they, want, they want to exact the most, the most visceral kind of revenge. He hasn't been arrested and charged with murder. None of his accomplices have been arrested and charged with murder. And I think part of what is fueling the violence here is the suspicion on the part of a lot of people that they never will be. That, that, that this will just happen. That Derek Chauvin will uh, move on to the police department of some other state because he has to. He has a need. I don't know about his accomplices, but I know he's killed someone before. And he has a need. He'll want to kill someone again. And the only way you can do that with impunity is if you're a police officer and the someone is black. And he knows that. He doesn't care about any of the rest of it. Doesn't care about the oath he swore to protect and serve. Nothing like that. And I, but I'll wait for the, for the press to confirm that. Sooner or later that will come out. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt. I've seen that face before. Uh, but all of this stuff together, the president openly warring with the First Amendment, the president of the United States calling for people to be, you know, for thugs to be murdered, uh, race protests where the protesters have to wear masks because we're all dealing with a pandemic that the, uh, the United States administration hid and lied about when they could have been stopping it. All of that somehow got to me this morning. It all just accumulated and got to me. I think probably the last pebble, the thing that did it, was clearly self-identifying reporters for a major news network being arrested because they were filming something the cops knew the president wouldn't want them to film. I think that might have been the thing that did it, but who knows? Who knows what it, it could have been? I don't know what it could have been. But all of that combined together this morning uh, to make me wonder briefly what on earth any of us are doing, getting on camera and talking about books, holding up piles of books, doing tags, talking about themes or characters we didn't particularly like or plot devices that really left us cold or whatnot. I... I Somehow this morning, I just fundamentally wondered, what on earth are you doing? I, I asked myself, I thought, well, you're, you're looking forward to making booktube videos for a bunch of book fans. Why? How on earth can you even be thinking about doing this when cities in America are burning? When, when black men in America, black women in America can be murdered with impunity by policemen who don't, uh, usually, this is a rarity, usually the cops don't lose their jobs. They go on paid administrative leave for a couple of weeks until everything dies, uh, dies down, until the, the protest dies down, then they just go right back to work. Usually that's what happens. In this case, that hasn't happened, but nothing worse will happen. And also, places everywhere in America that thought they were safe from this pandemic, and that therefore all of the places that ha were having hundreds of thousands of people die, uh, were lying about it, because the president tells me they're lying. The president says this is fake news. They are now experiencing spikes in infection and mortality, and worse is to come. And I looked at all that and I thought, what are you doing making videos about books? Why would you do that? And that is where asking for your indulgence comes in. I know this is a strange video, uh, but I want to ask for your indulgence because I want to do it anyway. I want to talk about books anyway. I can't do anything about any of the things that I just mentioned. 
once I learned the nature of this pandemic virus, then I knew what steps I needed to take to reasonably increase my protection against it. We all know those basic steps. They're very basic steps. They'd be true with any kind of, of new or extra virulent virus. They, they, they make perfect sense. And once I knew what those were, I started doing that. When the governor of my state, who is a Republican, but not totally insane, uh, started issuing executive orders about uh, public protection, wearing masks in public, that sort of thing, started uh, closing non-essential businesses and whatnot, I agreed because it's you you want to err on the side of caution you want your your populace to be safe those things i could participate in the news that I'm, that's surrounding me now i can't do anything about i can't i can't have any effect on it whatsoever and it feels to me that that this is a time when maybe the opposite is true that maybe now is when we need to talk about books more uh but what i really mean by that is that maybe i need to talk about books more now uh, and that's what I'm asking your indulgence for. That's what, that's what I'm asking your indulgence uh, so that I can do. I'm going to make a full slate of videos today. I'm going to do it tomorrow when tomorrow will be worse than today in terms of the news. Uh, because I firmly believe that by this time tomorrow, at least one protester will have been killed on camera in cold blood. And, and, and that the, this is Donald Trump. This is Donald Trump. If a protester is killed by a policeman in cold blood on camera, he's going to say there were very fine people on both sides. He's going to say, you know, they had it coming. Oh, what do you expect? Something like that. And you can see that it gets to me. It bothers me. And I am typically use books as an escape valve, a release, a, a, a refuge from all of this stuff. And that's what I'm asking your indulgence to do. I am going to make videos today and tomorrow and the next day. And they're going to talk about books. And because books make me happy, I will laugh and smile in those videos. Books will, they will do that to me. Talking with you makes me happy. And I guess a part of me is just asking you your indulgence because that does not in any way mean that I am trivializing the stuff that's happening outside of this little book room. I am not. I am not. But I can't do anything about it. And neither can most of you. We can talk to each other about books. Uh, so that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> I thought I'd make this video ahead of time. Very strange. I'll replay it in case it's just not uploadable. Uh, but I had, to, I had to talk this stuff out even if I don't upload this. Uh, just to let you know where I stand. That, that I'm, I'm watching all of this stuff. I was a very, very long time ago a newsman. I can't not watch this stuff. I can't not take it in. But <laughs> I, I love this little world, this little world of books and talking with all of you and having you talk to me. So I'm going to retreat into that world. I know it sounds cowardly, but I, I'm going to retreat into that world um, and just do that. So, so I thought I'd make this video first. Of course, it went long, uh, but I'm going to wrap it up now. I just wanted you to know what I was thinking, and I will I'll be back to talk about books. We're going to talk about books all day. Uh, thank you, book two. <laughs>